Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about normal distributions and how to use a Z table. Here we're going to find the total area indicated in the shaded region again, but this time we're finding the area between two positive Z scores. We're still going to look up the Z score of we're still going to look up the Z score of 2.63, and we'll see on our Z table that corresponds to an area of 0.496. Also, we're going to look up 0.61, which corresponds to an area of 0.229. But what are we going to do with those two values? Remember. These values are the area between the z-score of 0 and the z-score that we looked up. So for example, when we looked up z equals 0.61 and got 0.229, that was this little sliver of an area here between 0 and 0.61. But when we looked up z equals 2.63, that gave us the area between 0 and 2.63, which includes both the shaded region and the region in yellow. So how can we use those two values to get the region we want, which is the shaded region in gray? Well, isn't it true that if we take the region in red and subtract the region in yellow, we get the region in gray? So that's exactly what we're going to do. 0.496 minus 0.229 equals 0.267. That's the area that we're looking for. And we wouldn't have known this if we had not drawn our diagram. Here's another scenario. In this case, we're given a positive z-score, but we want to find the area to the right of it. If we look up z equals 2.14, this gives us an area of 0.484, which is referring to the area between 0 and the z-score of 2.14. So this area here is 0.484, but we want the area to the right of it. Well, keep in mind that the total area under the normal curve is 1. So the area to the right of 0, which includes the 0.484 and the shaded region, is actually 1 half, or 0.5. So we're going to subtract from 0.5 the 0.484, and we'll see that we have 0 0.016 left over. That's the area in gray that we're looking for. In all of the examples so far, we were given z-scores, but in this example, we're actually given data values, and we'll have to convert them to z-scores in order to answer the question. It says the volumes of soda in bottles from a small company are distributed normally. That's important because we couldn't use the standard normal distribution in the z-table if we didn't have a normal distribution. They're distributed normally with a mean of 12 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.15 ounce. If one bottle is randomly selected, what's the probability it will have more than 12.33 ounces? So we draw our standard normal curve, but I'm going to actually make two number lines. The first number line is going to be the data values. The mean goes in the middle, that's 12, and we're interested in bottles that have more than 12.33 ounces, which is why I've shaded to the right of 12.33. These are all x values or data values. Underneath that, I'm going to draw another number line, which shows the corresponding standard deviations. In other words, the z-scores. The z-score of the mean is always 0. But how can we find the z-score for a bottle that has 12.33 ounces? The relationship between the data value and the z-score is z equals x, the data value, minus the mean, which is denoted x-bar, divided by the size of a standard deviation, which is s. So we're going to calculate 12.33 minus 12 divided by s, which is given to us to be a standard deviation of 0.15. Now be careful when you plug this into your calculator that you don't have an error due to order of operations. The, the subtraction must come before the division. 
So you either need to put parentheses around your subtraction or hit enter after you subtract 12 before dividing by 0.15. The result is a z-score of 2.2. So I'm going to write 2.2 on my second number line. I'm also going to look up 2.2 on my standard normal table and see what area that corresponds to. This corresponds to an area of 0.486, but remember that 0.486 is the area between 0 and the z-score that we looked up. So this is the area in this location here. We want to know the area to the right of that. As in the previous example, we can use the fact that half the area under the standard normal curve is to the right of z equals 0. So that means we're going to subtract 0 0.500 minus 0.486. This is going to give us 0 0.014 as the amount of area that's in the shaded region. That also means that we can find, we can say that the probability that a bottle has more than 12.33 ounces is 0.014. Here's another type of problem where you're actually given the area and asked to find the z-score. So to summarize the different types of problems in this section, there are problems with one z-score. You're always gonna look up the z-score and find the corresponding area on the normal table if you're using the normal table and not, say, the empirical rule. But you also need to draw the picture to know what to do with that z-score. For example, if you have one of these where the z you're being asked to find the area of the region between zero and the z-score, regardless of whether the z-score is positive or negative, then the area you're looking for is the one that you looked up on the table, and you're done. But if the diagram that you draw either includes a positive z-score and all the area to the left of it, or it includes a negative z-score and all the area to the right of it, then you're going to need to add 0.5 plus the area that you find on the table because half of the standard normal curve is an area of 0.5 and then you're going to look up the area that's between 0 and z and add them together. Another scenario is that you have either a positive z-score and you're looking for the tail to the right of it or you have a negative z-score and you're looking for the tail to the left of it. Either way, after you look up the z-score and find the area A, you're going to need to subtract that area from 0.5 because half of the standard normal curve has an area of 0.5 and the area you're finding is the part you don't want. If you have two z-scores, you're still going to look up the two z-scores, but this time you're going to find two different areas, area 1 and area 2. And what you're going to do with those, again, depends on the diagram. If your z-scores are on opposite sides of the mean, so you have one positive z-score and one negative z-score, then you're going to find that the area 1 and area 2 need to be added together to get the total area. On the other hand, if both the z-scores are on the same side of the mean, for example, you have two negative z-scores or if you have two positive z-scores, either way, you're going to have to subtract the larger area minus the smaller area to get the shaded region. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.